Hey guys, this is Aman from Medureka and welcome to today's session on GCP security services. But before we get started, I would like to address the agenda for today's session. So firstly, we will have a quick introduction to Google Cloud Platform, then understand few of the prominent GCP security services such as Security Command Center, Cloud Armor, and also talk about identity and access management. Finally, we'll conclude our session by knowing what are GCP security best practices. And guys, if you like our video, do not forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell to never miss an update from the Edureka channel. Also, if you're looking for an online training certification in Google Cloud, check out the link given in the description box below. So moving on to a first topic, what is Google Cloud Platform? Basically, Google Cloud Platform is a suite of cloud computing services and management tools which are offered by Google. It runs on the same cloud infrastructure that Google uses internally for its end user product, such as your Google Search, your Gmail, Google Photos, and YouTube. It is one of the leading cloud service providers along with Amazon Web Services and Microsoft Azure and owns 7% of the total cloud market share. So many enterprises are increasingly adopting Google Cloud Platform because the services offered by GCP are more secure and are cost effective. Now talking about Google Cloud Global Network, it spans across 25 regions with 76 zones and is available to the user from 200 plus countries and territories. As we know, Google Cloud Platform is a cloud service provider. Let us take a look at the core service domain provided by GCP. The first service domain is compute, then storage and databases, then networking, big data, various developer tools, identity and security, Internet of Things, and cloud artificial intelligence. Now, this was a brief introduction of GCP. Let us move on to the next topic and understand what exactly is GCP's Security Command Center. Security Command Center is a security and risk management platform provided by Google Cloud. It is an intelligent risk dashboard and analytics system for surfacing, understanding, and remediating Google Cloud security and data risk across an organization. In simple words, it is an established security and risk database for Google Cloud. Now, the Security Command Center helps security teams gather data, identify threats, and act on them before they result in business damages or loss. It offers deep insight into application and data risk so you can quickly reduce the threats to your cloud resources across your organization and evaluate the overall health. Security Command Center provides a single centralized dashboard so you can view and monitor an inventory of your cloud assets. Now, assets are nothing but your resources like organizations, your projects, your instances, and your applications. It can also help in scanning storage system for the sensitive data. It can be used to detect common web vulnerability and anomalous behavior. With Security Command Center, you can also review the access rights to the critical or important resources in your organization. And along with that, you can follow the recommended actions to resolve the vulnerability present. Now, I guess you have some idea about what exactly is the Security Command Center. So now let us see how does the Security Command Center work in order to understand it better. Security Commission is an application. The Security Command Center asset discovery runs at least once a day. You can also manually rescan on demand from the Security Command Center assets display. Then the Security Command Center displays possible security risks that are associated with each asset. The possible security risk is called as findings. Now this finding comes from security sources that include Security Command Center's built-in services, third-party partners, and your own security detectors and finding sources. Now this was the working of Security Command Center. Now let us take a look at some of its prominent features. The first one is you can gain centralized visibility and control. Security Command Center gives you a centralized visibility of the number of projects you're using, what resources are deployed, and you can also manage which service accounts has been added or removed. The second feature is you can fix misconfiguration and compliance violation. With Security Command Center, you can identify security misconfigurations and a compliance violation in your Google Cloud assets. After you've identified these vulnerabilities, you can resolve them by following the actionable recommendation, which is provided by Google Cloud Platform. The third prominent feature is threat detection. You can detect threat using the logs running in the Google Cloud at scale. You can detect some of the most common container attacks, including suspicious binary, suspicious library, and reverse shell. You can also identify threats like cryptography mining, anomalous reboots, and suspicious network traffic with built-in anomaly detection technologies, which are developed by Google itself. Next, after threat detection, we have threat prevention. 
With security command center, you understand the security state of your Google Cloud assets. You can uncover common web application vulnerabilities such as cross-site scripting or outdated libraries in a web application that are running on either Google App Engine or Google Kubernetes Engine or Google Compute Engines. Then you can quickly resolve this misconfiguration by clicking directly on the impacted resources and following the procedure steps on how to fix it. The last feature is sensitive data identification. With Security Command Center, you can find out which storage bucket contains sensitive and regulated data using Cloud DLP. You can also prevent unintended exposure to these storage buckets and let only the authorized person access it. So these were some of the features of Cloud Security Command Center. Let us move on to the next topic and see what is Cloud Armor. Google Cloud Armor protects your application and website against denial of service and other web attacks. You can use Google Cloud Armor security policies to protect your application running behind a load balancer from distributed denial of service or DDoS and other web-based attacks. And your application could be deployed anywhere, whether on the Google Cloud or in a hybrid deployment or in a multi-cloud architecture. So this was the definition of Cloud Armor. Now let us understand how this Cloud Armor works. Google Cloud Armor's DDoS protection is always on inline, scaling to the capacity of Google's global network. So it is able to instantly detect and reduce network attacks in order to allow only well-formed requests through the load balancing proxies. With Google Cloud Armor security policies, you can also allow or deny access to your external HTTPS load balancer at the Google Cloud Edge, which is as close as possible to the source of incoming traffic. This helps you prevent unwanted traffic from consuming resources or entering your VPC network. Now let us take a look at some of the features of Google Cloud Armor. The first feature is IP based and geo based access control. You can filter your incoming traffic based on IPv4 and IPv6 addresses or CIDRS. You can also enforce geographic based access control to allow or deny traffic based on source geographical location using Google GeoIP mapping. The next feature is adaptive protection. Cloud Armor automatically detects and helps reduce high volume DDoS attacks with a machine learning system trained locally on your applications. The last feature is pre-configured web application firewall rules. Cloud Armor comes with the out of the box rule set based on industry standard to reduce the common web application vulnerabilities and help provide protection from various web attacks. So this was about Cloud Armor. Let us move on to the next topic and talk about identity and access management. Identity and access management lets the administrator authorize who can take action on a specific resources which will help you have full control and visibility to manage your Google Cloud resources centrally. IAM provides tools to manage resource permissions with minimum confusion and high automation. You can map job functions within your companies to groups and roles so that the user gets access only to what they need to get the job done. And the admins can easily grant default permission to entire group of users. So this was the definition of identity and access management in GCP. Now let us understand how does it work. With identity and access management, you can manage access control by defining who has what access for which resources. Now resources are nothing but your compute engine virtual machine instances or your Google Kubernetes engine clusters, your cloud storage bucket and so on. In IAM, permission to access a resource is not granted directly to the end user. Instead, a permission are grouped into roles and roles are granted to authenticated members. Now an IAM policy defines and enforces what roles are granted to which members. And this policy is attached to a resource. So when an authenticated member attempts to access a resource, IAM checks the resource policy to determine whether the action is permitted or not. So only if the action is permitted, then it lets the user access the resources. So I guess you have some idea about how this cloud identity and access management works. Now let us look at some of the features of IAM. The first feature is, Smart access control. Actually, permission management can be a time consuming task. So Google IAM provides Recommender, which helps admin remove unwanted access to Google Cloud resources by using machine learning to make smart access control recommendations. With Recommender, security teams can automatically detect overly permissive access and make them right based on the similar users in the organization and their access patterns. The next feature is fine grain control which means you can set IAM policy at any level in the resources hierarchy. It can be either in the organization level or the folder level, the project level or the resources level. 
IAM enables you to grant access to cloud resources at a fine-grained level. You can create more granular access control policies to resources based on attributes like device security status, IP addresses, resource types, and date and time. Moving on to the next feature, which is single access control interface. Now what this means is, IAM provides a simple and consistent access control interface for all your Google Cloud services. So you can just learn one access control interface and apply that knowledge to all the Google Cloud resources. The last feature is, it is free of charge. Now I would say this is more of a benefit. Google Cloud Identity and Access Management is offered at no additional charge for all the Google Cloud customers. So you will be charged only for the use of other Google Cloud services, not IAM. This was about GCP Identity and Access Management. Now let us move on to a final topic and see what are the best GCP security practices. Now before we dive into the best practices, I want you to know that cloud security is a shared responsibility which means you and your cloud service providers are both responsible for securing your resources and applications. While your cloud service provider, which is in this case Google Cloud, is responsible for platform security, which would include managing the physical machines and data centers, your application and data users. On the other hand, the users, that is you, are responsible for application security, which includes setting up proper authentication, authorization, and identification for users in their system. Next, the infrastructure security can be managed by users with the help of various tools which are provided by Google Cloud. So this is managed by you with the help of Google Cloud Platform. Now talking about the best practices, the first best practices apply least privilege access control or identity and access management. The principle of least privilege is a critical foundation element in GCP security. This concept is of only providing employees with the access to application and resources they need to properly do their jobs. Only the selected users should be authorized to take action on a specific resources. The next best practice is manage unrestricted traffic and firewalls. You should limit the IP ranges that you assign to each firewall and only allow the network that need access to those resources. GCP's advanced VPC features allow you to get very granular with traffic by assigning targets by tag and service accounts. The next best practice is ensuring your bucket name are unique across the whole platform. Now it is recommended to append random characters to your bucket name and not include the company's name in it. An example for your bucket name could be product logs, B7, B12, B365, something like that. This will make it harder for an attacker to locate bucket in a targeted attack. The next best practice is setting up a Google Cloud organization structure. When you first log in into a Google Cloud admin console, everything will be grouped into a single organization unit. Any settings you apply to this group will apply to all the users and devices in the organizations. So you should plan out how you want to organize your units and hierarchy before diving into what will help you save time and create a more structured security strategy. Now these were some of GCP security best practices. And with this we have come to the end of this video. I hope it was helpful. Do comment your thoughts in the comment section below. Happy learning.